every fall in the Pacific Northwest, rivers fill with one of our most valued resources. Salmon are completing a journey that has taken them thousands of miles from these rivers, their birthplace, to feeding grounds in the North Pacific Ocean before returning here to spawn and end their incredible life cycle. This epic migration brings millions of fish that not only feed us, but Pacific Northwest keystone species such as bears, wolves, sea lions, eagles, and perhaps, greatest of all, our southern resident killer whales. Today we are going out with the Coastal Watershed Institute in search not for salmon, but one of the crucial components of survival in their life cycle, forage fish. Forage fish are small, easily overlooked fish that are actually the essential base of our marine food web. To do that, we have come to the San Juan Islands, one of the most diverse, productive, and prized marine environments in the Salish Sea. This community of many islands boasts over 400 miles of marine shoreline, the most of any county in the U.S., and it's these shoreline habitats that make the San Juans so important for people and nature. Let's dive with them into these emerald waters to see for ourselves this fundamental habitat and the forage fish that inhabit them. This is a bull kelp forest. Bull kelp grows up to two feet a day, provides shelter for thousands of animals, and as you swim through it, it's easy to imagine you are flying through the top of a tree canopy. In this underwater forest, we luck out and find ourselves among what could be thousands of the forage fish we are looking for. Herring. Pacific herring are small fish with a big job. These schools spend their day feeding on plankton and in turn grow to be tasty, protein-filled snacks for the salmon that will soon be hatching in the nearby rivers. We find more herring on a nearby reef. Here it is easy to see how the shorelines of the San Juan Islands are part of a great underwater highway. Not only a pit stop for juvenile salmon to feed and grow on their way to the sea, but for these herring on their way to spawning grounds in British Columbia. How many fish do you think there are in this school? Pretty amazing. The diversity and health of these shoreline habitats that surround the San Juan Islands are what bring these important fish here. Among this school, we see a fish called perch, lazily looking for plant material on the rocky reef to feed on. Another important habitat for forage fish, especially herring, is eelgrass. It is in this habitat that these fish spawn by utilizing the blades of grass to lay their eggs on. In recent years, these eelgrass beds have suffered some decline due to pollution and other human activity like boating and shoreline construction. This collaboration of scientists and conservationists are working on a solution. They have learned how to grow the eelgrass in a nearby laboratory, a process that can take years. But now that it's ready, they have come here to Westcott Bay to plant the lab-grown grass into the areas they used to grow naturally. It's sort of like planting tree saplings in a forest restoration project. Using cord, the shoots will be tied to metal rods or rebar, and then placed into the sandy bottom of the bay where they will hopefully develop roots and repopulate the area. Here we see one scientist taking this opportunity to place environmental sensors that will gather additional data, like temperature and light, at the transplant site. This data will be invaluable to further understand the success of these conservation efforts. This project is just one of the many collaborative conservation projects going on to restore the shoreline habitats of the San Juan Islands in support of marine food webs. So where are the salmon that are going to eat all these small forage fish that we are working so hard to protect? To find out, we must travel up the rivers into the Cascade Mountain Range. These are baby salmon, or fry. These fish have just hatched in these mountain creeks and will travel through the San Juans to gorge on the forage fish and grow before embarking on their great journey to the North Pacific Ocean. It's hard to imagine such small fish swimming thousands of miles only to return here, to the exact rivers they were born in, to spawn. But here they are. These salmon started as babies, or fry, in this exact same spot four years ago. Now at the end of their journey, they spend their days building reds, or nests, to place their eggs. You can see this female salmon building her red by turning on her side and flapping to create a small protected area where she will lay her eggs. 
These great gatherings in mountain streams are a beautiful end to a grand journey. Soon, after these adult salmon have made sure that the next generation has been successfully bred, they will unfortunately pass away. But their passing is not in vain. The thousands of salmon that swim up these streams become nutrients for the surrounding trees and forests. They feed the animals and plants that live here. Without salmon, our forests would not be as thick or as green as we have come to know them. Salmon, eelgrass, bull kelp, forage fish, orca whales, humans. All of these exceptional things are intertwined, connected in ways that we don't see on the surface level. But if we aren't paying attention, if we don't care, who will? The next time you go to your local beach or river, as you look out over the surface, take a moment to go deeper and remember this amazing, complex web of life that exists outside of our normal view, but depends on all of us as stewards to protect it.